at this time, I don't feel like there's any other race of, of people who could be systematically set up the way we've been set up. It's like they're wiping all that out of history. In unity, there's strength. We can't come together to do anything together. To this day. Because I was looking at the other individuals in my class who look just like me, how we would never get into study groups together. We would be like, I'm going to go, and I'm going to team up with, with the Asian guys. I'm going to team up with, with the Caucasians. But it was never we were like, hey, why don't we come together? No matter how much talent you got, how great your idea, if you're doing it as a single individual, you're going to do a menial, meager a mind. community is so small that we have a tendency to compete with each other. Sure. So everybody's in competition with each other. Rather than trying to pull each other up, we're competing. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. It goes back to the Willie Lynch letter. I don't know if you gentlemen have actually read oh, the absolutely. I, I know absolutely. it. Like, it all plays back to that letter. And I know when I first read that letter when I was in college, it opened up my eyes. Yes. Yeah. Because when I read it, I was like, this holds true to this very day. To this day. Because I was looking at the other individuals in my class who look just like me, how we would never get into study groups together. Hmm. We would be like, well, I'm going to go and I'm going to team up with, with the Asian guys. I'm going to team up with, with the Caucasians. But it was never we were like, hey, why don't we come together? It was always we felt that the other races were smarter, so let me hang around these guys so sure. I can get the grades. Mm -hmm. And when I read the letter, I was like, this is sad because I saw it right here in, my, in front of my face in the classroom. Absolutely. And I was like, if we would come together, we can do so much. And as I started researching more, I noticed that every revolution has, has ever happened has happened with the kids. Every, everything that's happened, the kids have had some say so and they have kickstarted some, something. Well, they have the energy. You right. Know. <laughs> but now I see the generation now where they're just like, well, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll tweet, you know, Black Lives Matter. Or I'll tweet this. Sure. But tweeting can only do so much because that's social. That's, 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 just, that's just the media. And the media is not controlled by us. So if we just put it on our phones and we say, you know what, let's get in these streets and let's protest. Let our voices be heard. It can be so much more than just sitting on your phone and say, well, I'm going to hashtag this. I'm going I'm to do this. If you think about something like this, the Million Man March, let's say you get a million I men. I was there, the original. Okay? And that was powerful in and of itself. But when you think on even a, a deeper level, had there been a list that gone out of all the black businesses in D.C. and told every man that came out, only patronize these businesses. Mm -hmm. Only, no matter how you know, no matter how inconvenient it may feel, where you got to travel, right. we would have made such a powerful statement. Because what happens is, when we <laughs> send a million brothers to D.C., everybody wins because we patronize all the businesses. We go shopping at the mall. We don't really make a, a powerful stand. Is when you can get a million brothers in one place, yes. and you only shop at black businesses. Yes, you right, understand? Sure. That's we have to start being proactive in that way. There's like, you can't just show up and stand there and say, we're upset. We have to show you that, watch how much money we make. We can make, we could have made somebody a millionaire in a weekend if everybody would have went to this one restaurant, stood in line if it took six hours, just to say that we are willing to wait to eat just to give this brother right here who might, whose business might be suffering, he could have made his whole year that weekend, but we don't, that put that together but that well, look at, because look like at competition the, like what you were talking yeah, but about but look at the uh i'm sorry dr yeah, look at the look at the person that's that's the head of that movement um uh mr lewis farrakhan you know he's he's putting himself on the line and showing that we have the power to get brothers together and you don't and when we just had this discussion the other day 
you haven't really seen a white forum bring that many people together in peace and positivity to really exploit a message to, to get us further. And Mr. Farrakhan has done it twice already. And, and it's something that if we can get uh, 1.8 or 1.9 million brothers together, we can recycle our dollar. We can put our brains together of that 1.8 million people over those two events. We can get people to get involved to change different communities and different parts of this country. Right. So it's, it's there. That whole weekend should have been planned out in terms of economic planning mm -hmm. and say, hey, look, we're going to come together, we're going to have, and it should have been following this protocol. Mm -hmm. Even if they had set it up for vendors, black vendors to be outside and sell food, the idea was to show that we can, we can create wealth within our community yes, and sir. not just constantly be consumers. How many times have you guys heard individuals say, well, I'm not going to go to this black mechanic because they're going to charge me arm and a leg. Let me go over here to the Caucasian mechanic because I'm going to get a better rate. And when you compare it, no, the white guy's charging the same amount that this black man is going to charge you. But our mindset is so, is so messed up where we were like, I'd rather go spend my dollars over here because I'm going to get better right. quality work. It's, we have to stop that. And it, I noticed in the 70s and 80s, that mentality where we need to recycle our own dollars, our, our, own, our, own, our own money, was something that we pride ourselves on. Hmm. Growing up in, in Ohio, there were so many black businesses that I, I, I know for a fact I can go to them like, hey, let me go down here to Easter's um, um, grocery store because he's got the best deals. And we would never travel outside of our community to, sh to spend our money. Sure. But in yeah, the 80s, that changed. Part of the business is concerns black people. And what you found out when you started trying to patronize black people, nobody taught us customer service. Mm. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> Nobody taught us customer service. So now you go into a business. Sure. And there's an attitude there. It's like uh, they're not it's like they're not really there to serve you. They're there to make some money. I think that those key things have been uh, you know kind of downplayed in, 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 in elementary school or in junior high. Like, there's no point where they're really hammering home, you need to know how to handle your business. You need to understand just your basic, what credit is, what, how to balance your bank account, understanding you know, how to simply set scenarios up where you're serving somebody and how, why it's important to have great customer service. We're not taught these things because we're, we're, we're set up to fail. We're set up to fail. People go to these white restaurants and go, oh, this is awesome because I love it. I go in there and they make me feel at home. Not really. It's about the money. When you go to these Asian restaurants or you go to their, their, their stores, hey, how are you? They get to know you, make you feel like you're a part of something. A lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them. And that's about customer service. So that's the thing. We, 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 we set ourselves up to fail because we don't see the bigger picture. We don't see what we can truly have as a community. I mean, I think at the heart is, you know, just wrapping this up. On the next segment, I definitely want to talk about what our solution is. What can we impart in our youth to really get them to start moving in the right mindset? Okay?